There have been a lot of great Android gaming devices in 2022, and I'm excited for the new year to start and for new devices to be unveiled. But until then, Android gaming just became a lot more serious with the arrival of one accessory. The Backbone One for Android. Android is a great operating system for gaming, but having great controllers is not always easy. Grips can be enjoyable, but nothing beats a telescopic controller, successfully transforming your phone into a handheld gaming beast. And if you've been like me, you've had at least bought a dozen over the years, searching for the perfect option. That's not to say that none of them are good, quite the opposite in fact, but at least to me, they all felt like having to compromise. For the record, this controller was bought by me and the opinions you'll hear in this review are entirely my own. And also, though I do not own a Razer Kishi V2, one which I might have to buy for a proper 1v1 matchup, I will be drawing comparisons from it as it is obviously its main competitor. Let's talk about the components. Other than regular game controller inputs, you'll find a media button that can record and grab screenshots and a backbone dedicated one which brings us in and out of their very own software, which we'll get to in a minute. The only rubber dome buttons you'll find are the D-pad, which is the most important in my opinion. Everything else, as far as I can tell, are tactile switches, but fear not, as these are obviously great quality switches. In comparison, they feel much better than what you'd find on a GameStar controller, for example. Here's a quick sound test. The sticks are pretty much identical to Joy-Cons in size and hide, but due to the way it is shaped, especially the gasket looking outer ring, these are the most comfortable small sticks I've used to control cameras in first person games. The triggers are analog, offering precise inputs in games that makes use of them, such as racing games. What this controller lacks versus the Kishi V2, and is a disappointment of mine, are custom keys, commonly known as LC, RC, or also M1, M2. Although I'm not exactly sure how Razer implemented these keys, mimics, or independent values, not having them is unfortunate, and I wish the Backbone team had opted them in rather than leaving them out. I presume they decided not to as to not risk any anger from their established Apple user base. But it does have something that the Kishi V2 doesn't, a 3.5mm jack with microphone support. And last is a USB-C charge pass-through that can support at least 15 watt that I know of, Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test for higher wattage, but it may support more. Now, the other part that makes this controller excellent, outside of the controller itself, is its software. Backbone offers three things as it stands. A great game launcher, a media library for recordings, and a social gathering tool. But, to be honest, the app feels incomplete when compared to the iOS counterpart. Features such as sticks recalibration, button mapping, and test controller buttons are currently missing from the Android software. I reached out to their team but haven't heard back yet. Time for a disclaimer. This specific part of the review was added mere minutes before shooting it. On December 25th, when I originally wanted to shoot this review, I couldn't get Backbone software to function no matter what I did. On the 26th, I received an email from Backbone saying they noticed I tried getting online, that the servers were struggling, and that everything was now back to normal. So on the 27th, I logged in, but this time was something I had not seen before. It all came rushing back. At some point, Backbone decided to lock some of the features that were originally included behind a paywall, as well as further implemented features such as the Backbone in wired mode. It gave its pre-existing users a lifetime membership and left it for other customers to pay. While it is true that Backbone certainly does more than what most regular controllers usually do in terms of software, community, etc., it is also the case that I can go on the website and browse the main page all while being enticed with features that are behind a paywall without ever having an asterisk telling me that this is only possible with the subscription. Backbone team, if ever you see this video, no one can tell you how to run your business and products, so that's not what I'm doing here, but you should inform customers that not every features that you present 
are accessible with the free package and also that a subscription is even a thing at all prior to purchase. The website shows me footage recorded with Backbone at 1080p 60fps but nowhere does it say that this feature requires Backbone Plus. No asterisks, no nothing. As for potential future customers, please make sure to visit Backbone's description of its subscription service to confirm that you are comfortable with that and if you wish to use specific services. However, I can say this much, the controller as it is intended to do is guaranteed to work with or without a subscription as per Backbone's very own description. Now that my part is done, back to the rest of the review as it was. As for the social component, it is huge. They've created a party system that is cross-platform. Now, that's a killer feature for the software. See, the Backbone app allows you to have a party as you would on PlayStation or Xbox online services. And just like those parties, you can be sitting with your friends up to 10 people at once talking. You can also mute your microphone by double tapping the triple dot button on iPhone. The feature is listed on both operating systems, but I couldn't get it to work on Android. And that leads me back to software and consistencies. For example, if I boot Minecraft on my Android client, iOS 1 receives a notification. In fact, the iOS client can even boot Minecraft by clicking on the person playing it. None of those worked or behaved the same on Android. The Android client was running into glitches instead. Nothing major, but enough to be constantly reminded that the version is lacking in comparison. But I also happen to be able to compare both versions. If I wasn't, I'd be perfectly satisfied with the software. So take from that what you will. Now, if you are familiar with Backbone products, you may be aware that they released a Sony PlayStation branded controller for iOS. So not everyone may be aware of that, but Sony has a remote play app to play your PS4 and PS5. That's common knowledge, but there is a major disparity on Android and PC. You can only do so if you use a PlayStation controller. On iPhone and iPad, you can use any iOS supported controller, it'll just work. Therefore, the PS Remote Play app is perfectly compatible with iPhones using Backbone. So, to make sure that this was not the first non-Sony controller to magically be able to use the Remote Play app on Android, I tested it and unfortunately it still doesn't work. Someone should inform the Backbone team that the initial configuration on Android says otherwise. That does not mean, however, that you cannot play your Sony consoles on Android using your Backbone controller. You just have to look elsewhere. Here are two options that I know. PS Play from the Play Store or what I've been using personally since the PS5 release, Replay. Fun fact, it's developer who goes by TMACDEV did amazing work during the PS4 era, enabling many XDA users around the world to use Android devices with non-Sony controllers. Thanks to this guy, I played my PS4 using my NVIDIA Portable Shield. TMACDEV, if ever you see this, thanks, I've been a big fan of your work. Both apps do require a minimal fee. Having bought PS Play to test it out, I'm happy to report that both programs work straight out of the box. As for everything else I tested, this controller works beautifully without any issues whatsoever. One thing that caught me off guard, however, was when I went to gamepadtester.com, the controller reports as backbone, nice, but it doesn't give me any option to test circularity. That was kind of weird, especially since the iPhone model is spoofed as a dual shock for, and that one certainly lets us test as we wish. Wait, did I just say what I think I have? That was kind of weird, especially since the iPhone model is spoofed as a dual shock for it. Dual shock for it. Yep, you might have guessed it. Using the wired iOS backbone controller does work on the Android official PS Remote app. Interesting, I did not know that. You know, if I was a developer, I would hide an Easter egg combination that lets me turn this Android controller into a spoofed PS4 one. Oh well. Oh, and for the record, this may have been patched in later revisions of the Backbone 1 for iOS, so I can't guarantee that we will all have the same results. Of course, Android being home to so many different phones, it's important that we address compatibility. The Backbone team has a nice compatibility list that they keep updating as per the website. 
I'll link it down below. With that said, I would tend to agree with them that most phones should work. I was able to measure slightly over 7 inch when fully extended. That should be enough for most phones out there. In fact, though it is not listed, I was able to fit the Fold 4 both opened and close. It sure makes for an unusual look, but I must say this was pleasantly comfortable and plays just fine. And the Fold 4 being particularly excellent for emulators, this could be a really fun way to experience retro gaming. As you may have noticed a little earlier, when talking about circularity tests, this controller works when plugged in on a PC for now. Bringing back the subscription model, if the benefits they list are anything to go by, this should be behind a paywall. I can report that for the time being, while things are in beta, it seems that this feature is just working as it is. This could be a great solution for people looking to have a gamepad in their travel bags. So let's end this review with what flows nicely with this device and what is rather arid. This controller has great feeling throughout. There aren't any buttons that feels cheap or lack cohesiveness as a total package. The comfort is also definitely present. It doesn't feel cheap by any means. Of course, it's not impervious to just about everything, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this controller take many drops with no signs of slowing down, particularly when talking about its stretching mechanism. Yeah, I know. 3.5 jacks feels nearly useless at this point. It's almost as if they're becoming a nostalgic feature. So whenever there's one, I get to take my old pair of wired headphones that I really like and I don't have to deal with latency, so I'm happy. As much as the subscription is making me grind my teeth, the features are there and this is the closest to an online service as we might ever get, especially with the fact that it creates a bridge between iOS and Android. So that's something I didn't address in my review, but I've dealt twice with their customer service. The first time was for a controller that broke a few days after the regular warranty. And another time was for one of those adapters for the recent iPhones. Every encounter was positive, effective, and ultimately left me happy as a customer. Now, technically, this is not part of the mandatory keys, but it rapidly is becoming something gamers come to expect. And I'm sure Backbone knows this as the main competitor does have them. Hopefully next time around, but for now, that's a disappointment. My issue is not the price of the controller on its own or even the subscription on its own. It's the package that is hard to swallow. This controller is definitely priced as premium. It doesn't have a battery or antenna, which I'm perfectly okay with. But to some extent, this is a premium product with premium pricing, so I'm sure it's premium margins for backbone. So why charge the subscription on top and alienate potential customers or existing ones, which ultimately affects the community. I've been a user for some time. The lobbies work great, but there are hardly ever two digits and of people in there. Yet you go and create an even bigger clash with a subscription. I, I don't know. It feels like abuse. Do one or the other, but both is too much. Now that one I'm sure is because they just didn't think it was necessary on lunch and I could get behind that idea, but I do hope that they intend to make versions match as right now there is a noticeable gap between the two. And so that pretty much sums it out guys. The controller comes with a free month of Google Play Pass. If you haven't tried the service before, I haven't so I figured why not. It's been a long time coming for Android users to finally have this controller in our midst. And though they took their sweet time, and hopefully that was their last time treating us like second tier citizens, I'm glad that this controller finally exists. What about you guys? Is there a controller that you swear by and see no reason to ever replace? Let me know in the comment box below. There is one that I have in mind, but it's not really a controller and it is eight times the price. Watch this video if you're curious to see what it is.